Franken Tune Franken Tune Studio What the back Hello and welcome This is Enrique from Franken Tune Studio Today I'm proving that I'm still alive And secondly I want to show you a quick demo of our latest pack for Affinity Photo and Affinity Designer called Splat. In this video, I'll be demonstrating the Splat color process, which is only available for Affinity Photo. So, what is this Splat color thing, you may ask? Well, the Splat color process is a collection of macros designed for Affinity Photo and aimed to transform your illustrations into amazingly believable pieces of vintage comic style artworks. For this demo, I'll be using one of the sample artworks that come with a pack, in this case, sample number 2. First, I need to make sure my primary color is set to white. For this example, I run the macro name Mesprinted Inks Global. I'll be ramping up the slider to 50%. Sixty looks better, actually. And I'll hit Apply. A couple of editable light filters have been added to our layer's structure. Now, I'll jump onto step 1, Film Separation, which will create three layers corresponding to CMY colors out of my colors layer. Now, onto step 2, Apply Red as a spot color. This macro will separate all tones closer to pure red. To make this layer look more organic, we're gonna apply the Spot Red Damage macro. This one will add a procedural texture to our Spot Reds. Ink Damage will lower the quality of our red tones, like a thinner effect, as you can see here. Pores Density will add some procedural grain to the whole layer. Let's apply these settings. We'll do the same for blue colors using the macro Apply Blue as a spot color. Next, we'll add some damage to our spot blue layer. This macro uses a different type of procedural textures. You'll be able to control scratches, ink damage and intensity. Now, as you can see, spot reds and blues have different textures applied to them. The next step will be adding a line work facer. This macro will lower the quality of your inks layer. You can see that colors will bleed through blacks, as in actual vintage comic books. The next optional macro will be Colors Alignment. You can shift all colors around, but usually this macro works great with the default settings. Step 3 features a single macro called Screening. This one will allow you to control cyan and magenta dot size. Well, it's all coming together now. This takes us to step number four. Big colors will kind of dry out all layers and will make everything look more homogeneous. It will also bring back the ink damage that was hidden after film separation in step zero. Now, we're going to simulate a classic printing pass using the Vintage Printer macro. We'll be able to control the paper age, ink temperature, and some press work imperfections on the final colors. Nice! These macros will generate a bunch of layers that we'll be able to modify to taste later. Finally, the Newspaper Me Macro will add a paper pulp procedural texture to the entire artwork. 
it will fade colors to make them look as if it were printed out on a newspaper. As I said before, you can edit any adjustment and filter to your liking. I'll be dimming down the newspaper texture about 50%. Perfect. You can explore and play around with all layers, turn them on and off to try different outputs. You can also experiment the activating effects. Each adjustment and light filter comes with a descriptive name so you can understand what each one does. You can add one or more textures on top from a vintage paper asset included with the pack as a final touch. As you can see, this flat color process is very straightforward and it will take you less than 5 minutes to apply all macros. I hope you have enjoyed this short video. For more information about Splat for Affinity, check the link in the description. See you next time! Franken two. Franken two. Franken two. Franken two. Franken two. Franken two.